what's good y'all it's your boy ross back here again with another video so we're gonna check out top 30 wwe raw omg moments of all time it only makes sense to check this out since raw 30 is coming up this monday or raw triple x uh it's it's funny that it's you know they they have the graph for that so it kind of comes off like porn related but nevertheless 30 years on monday night raw has been some crazy insane omg moments only only makes sense to check that out since raw 30 is right upon us but i appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel let's get right into this compilation shocking returns to heartbreaking retirements to a real life heart attack these are the top 30 omg moments in monday night raw history number 30 is an important reminder of why you shouldn't play with fire during the thunderdome era mm -hmm. of wwe evolution teammates triple h and randy orton battled in the main event of the show after rolling back and forth the game grabbed his trademark sledgehammer but suddenly all of the screens in the arena began to shut off and triple h's weapon instantaneously started on fire the rest of the lights shut off and when they came back on the game was nowhere to be seen instead alexa bliss is in the <laughs> ring and stared remembers down. this before the viper can make sense of the situation bliss suddenly put her hand by her face and blasted him with a fireball randy immediately fell to the mat and rolled around in agony while this moment was filmed before raw went on the air the fireball is still one of the most violent and disturbing endings to any episode of Raw. If you thought that was unsettling though, then wait until you see number 29. In his Raw debut, Vader easily destroyed his opponent, Savio Vega, but he wasn't done just yet. Vader delivered a second Vader box to the veteran and then headbutted a referee and oh, no. bombed another one. Oh. Vader was so out of control that interim WWE president, Gorilla Monsoon, had to confront him. Monsoon was disgusted by Vader's actions and decided to suspend him indefinitely. The monster did not take it well and oh, slapped no. the president. In turn, Monsoon fought back and attacked <laughs> with a series of chops, but the Hall of Famer made a fatal mistake by taking his eyes off the monster. Vader delivered a splash, oh. an elbow drop, oh. and a final devastating Vader bomb on the oh. Wrestler. Fans were stunned, and what made this moment so shocking was that Monsoon, while a former wrestler, had been known to newer fans as a beloved and fun announcer. So the attack on the legendary figure was one of the most unsettling wow. moments seen in WWE at that He's point. He's selling it this too. This next one, though, is easily the most painful WWE moment, if you're a man at least. Shane McMahon. Well, who remembers when Kane once again <laughs> was just he's on a rampage and he started targeting Shane and the whole. But he was getting extreme. He was trying to take out Shane. This was this was this was a crazy time for uh, for Kane, bro. He was ultra mega rogue at this point. Has done a lot of crazy things over the course of his career. Look at this. He's jumped from insane heights and taken some brutal punishment. Oh. He's a man with little fear. So when Kane attacked his mother, Linda, yeah. Shane had no problem trying to <laughs> But maybe he should have been a bit more cautious. On the September 1st, 2003 episode of Raw, Shane McMahon was told all night that something bad would happen to him. Shane didn't listen and headed out to the ring. Raw general manager Eric Bischoff first came out to confront him, but the lights suddenly went out and the bigger machine attacked McMahon from behind. Kane handcuffed Shane and this then reached cold. under the ring and tossed water on McMahon's helpless body. This was then, cold, bro. in one of the most strangest oh attacks in God, WWE history, so the double spear demon bro. attached jumper cables to Shane's goods and the other to a car battery. That was gross. Sparks started flying as McMahon screamed in pain. Thankfully, Rob Van Dam saved the day <laughs> and perhaps the future children of Shane. But for that moment, Shane O'Mac was the most electrifying man in sports. In <laughs> Shout out to RVD, WCW man. WCW went out of business and WWE purchased the company. They brought in a number of WCW wrestlers, but there's a few notable names missing. One of them was Goldberg, and there was no sight of him until 2003 mm -hmm. in the final segment of raw this Rock was a was cool segment in the glow of his victory legendary steve austin from the night prior at wrestlemania but then some familiar music hit Rock, I'll tell you this, right. this is so good it was surreal finally seeing goldberg appear in a wwe ring unfortunately for the rock the show ended with him on his back after taking a devastating spear from the beautiful spear. WCW heavyweight champion rock was it selling it happened later than fans expected but goldberg showing up on raw was still one of the craziest debuts ever seen mm -hmm. this next moment was even crazier though in late 1999, fans were supposed to see a beautiful moment of Test and Stephanie McMahon getting married. Yeah, oh but if you ever boy. seen a wedding in WWE, you know they never end well. Nope. However, fans were not prepared for just how shocking things would play out. As Test was about to say, rest, I bro, do, rest, he was uh, interrupted by Triple H. Rest in peace, Test, man. <laughs> rest in peace. But this this segment, different time in wrestling, different time in just the world. You can't even... 
I'm going to just let the clip speak for itself. <laughs> the game came out and made a pretty uncomfortable scene for everyone. He showed a video of himself driving through Las Vegas and pulling up to a drive through wedding. Then, it was revealed that an unconscious Stephanie McMahon was in the passenger seat. It's Triple insane. H mimicked her voice to say, I do, and an unholy union was formed. Not only did this moment kick off some major storylines, but it may still be the most over-the-top and memorable WWE wedding yeah, ever. This next wild, moment was memorable man. as well, but for an entirely different reason. Ever since WWE started, it's been a staple to have small, no-name guys take on much bigger name talent. Mm -hmm. These small guys get little to no offense in, and of course, never win or almost never win. The same year Raw went on the air, Razor Ramon faced the kid. The kid had appeared on TV twice before this and was beaten in under three minutes in both incidents. This match with Razor looked to be the same, but no one could expect what actually happened. Do you know what I didn't expect though? How nutritious and delicious Factor's meals are. I like how he segued into video. that. <laughs> delivers fresh, never frozen he segued into that pretty right well. Doorstep. Or pack. You can place your Factor order Ramon was momentarily stunned. The kid capitalized and hit a moonsault to score the three count and the victory. It was one of the biggest upsets in WWE history and helped launch the kid's career, who later became known as mm. X-Pac. Now, if the kid had fought this next wrestler, then it would I, I, I thought he looked familiar. That's, that's a young X-Pac. That's crazy. It would be a much different story. On March 14th, 2004, Brock Lesnar left WWE after only about two years in the company. Mm -hmm. After leaving, the former WWE champion became even more popular as he conquered UFC and became one of the most famous famous sports stars on the planet. Yep. Meanwhile, John Cena had taken over for Brock as the face of WWE, but at WrestleMania 28 in 2012, mm -hmm. Cena took a rare loss to The Rock. On Raw the following night, Cena came out to apologize to the fans for letting them down and called out the Great One to congratulate him. But Rock was nowhere to be seen. Instead, some familiar music played through yep. the arena. Infamous Monday Night Raw. The crowd went crazy, yep. and the commentators were at a loss for words. Brock entered the ring and teased a handshake with Cena, but lured yep. him in to a devastating <laughs> F5. With that one statement... All, I will say this, this was a, such a great moment, I just, they didn't capitalize. Honestly, this should have been the year that John Cena ultimately probably turned heel because he was struggling to get wins. They should have kept that going. Brock should have beat him uh, at the, they had a pay-per-view match. I forgot what it was. Comment down below. Let me know what pay-per-view it was. But John Cena ended up winning the match as, you know, John Cena does, you know, Super Cena overcome the odds and stuff like that. But I do think this should have been a great moment to have Brock come back, beat the crap out of John. And now John is going on this downward spiral. He can't get the job done in these big high profile matches ultimately turning him heel and we could have got the heel turn that we definitely needed from john and it would have just freshened up his character you know so but hey it, it is what it is it was one of the biggest and most shocking returns in the history of wwe the next moment is also shocking but probably not for the reason you think by the end of 1998, Whoa. the war between The Undertaker and Steve Austin was Oh, yeah, I remember this. At yeah, one it was point, Taker wild, tried bro. to actually kill the Texas Rattlesnake by embalming him, but an even bigger spectacle happened soon after. After a main event match on Raw featuring The Rock and The Undertaker versus Austin and Mankind, Taker knocked out Stone Cold with the ring bell. The dead man then carried Austin up to the entryway, where he was greeted by druids. Undertaker ordered them oh, to tie yeah. Stone Cold to a large symbol, which clearly this, was a this cross. This was just wild. As the symbol rose, creepy chanting music began to play, and The Undertaker had basically crucified Austin. Even though mm -hmm. WWE downplayed the religious symbolism, it's still one of the most shocking images ever seen on Raw. This next moment, though, was so good that everybody thought it was real. But shout out to uh, to Mark Henry, and shout out to Jacob Henry, uh, his son, uh, his cool dude, um, always showing love on the main channel and on my personal page shout out to you jacob henry bro and uh yeah man i already know which segment he's talking about it has to be the infamous i'm about to retire speech he had um and john cena out there and it was a big it was a big swerve he wasn't retiring he attacked john cena so Probably the best promo segment Mark Henry has ever done, in my opinion, bro. So By good. 2013, Mark Henry had enjoyed a long and successful run in WWE. 
However, if you watched Henry's Belt Bell video, you know he dealt with a lot of injuries. Because of this, it looked like Mark was going to retire. On Raw, Mark Henry came walking out and looked emotional. He joined John Cena, and the world's dish. strongest man thanked the fans for supporting him over the years. As tears filled his eyes, this he announced so he was retiring from WWE. Both the fans and Cena were cheering and congratulating Henry. It was an emotional moment. But then, Mark suddenly laid out the WWE <laughs> with the world's strongest slam. The retirement turned out to be fake, and Mark Henry still had a lot left. Oftentimes, WWE moments are ruined because the fans know what's going to happen. No but one saw this coming, into bro. This, retirement. this was so fans good. Fans also didn't see this next moment coming either. Once they became partners in 2016, Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens turned into the best of friends. <laughs> yeah. Or so we thought. For months, the two charismatic Canadians were inseparable. They taped together, interfered in each other's matches, mm -hmm. and created some hilarious moments. In February 2017, Jericho hosted the Festival of Friendship in honor of his best friend, Kevin Owens. Jericho showered KO with presents <laughs> and appreciation. Owens returned the favor by giving Y2J a gift, a new list, the list of KO. Kevin Owens then attacked Chris Jericho mm -hmm. and threw him into a TV, shattering the screen. It was so sad to see a great pair of friends become enemies like this, but it made for a great OMG moment. Yeah, Number great Number was great also turn. pretty good, and you'll see why. At SummerSlam 1997, Stone Cold was nearly paralyzed in a botched pile driver by Owen Hart. Mm -hmm. Because of his injury, Austin was not medically cleared to compete. Stone Cold became frustrated and started attacking members of the WWE roster. Finally, Vince McMahon had enough. Austin faced arrest when McMahon pleaded for the Texas Rail Snake to stop. Steve Austin eventually appeared to agree with his boss, but just like a snake, he struck quickly. Stone Cold showed his true feelings when he kicked McMahon in the stomach and hit him with a stunner. The crowd absolutely exploded. It was the first of many McMahon stunners to come, but seeing it for the first time was something special. Nah, it was. Five Legendary later, moment. Vince McMahon was part of a moment that fans never thought would actually happen. It was no secret that Eric Bischoff and Vince McMahon did not like each other. The two tried to run the other out of business during the Monday Night Wars and took some pretty hard shots against each other. Mm -hmm. However, McMahon and WWE ended up winning, and Bischoff and WCW were done. Considering the bad blood, it was reasonable to assume that Eric Bischoff would never go working for the enemy. Then, this happened on Raw in 2002. That shit was wild, bro. Things became even more shocking when Vince McMahon not only announced his former rival as the new GM of Raw, but also embraced Bischoff with a big hug. Yeah, that was After a crazy, all the shots each side took crazy the thing Wars, to see. It felt like hell had frozen over seeing this image. On the other hand, this next moment was just pure awesome. The Raw after WrestleMania is often one of the best, if not mm -hmm. the best, episode of the year. Many big things could happen, like what happened the night after WrestleMania 29 in 2013. The World Heavyweight Champion, Alberto Dolph Dario, cashing in. A rematch I'm gonna be honest with you. This may be one of the best cash ins of all time, and I think it's because of the atmosphere, the crowd's energy, and and just the the way they set it up because it looked like maybe Dolph wasn't gonna get the job done, and then he finally did. The pop he got was so I get goosebumps talking about it. It's one of my favorite cash ins of all time, bro. Against Jack Swagger. Del Rio won, but injured his leg during the fight. While Alberto was recovering, this happened. Del Rio, but this is so good, bro. Dolph Ziggler decided it was time to cash in, and so he did. For a brief moment, it looked like the show-off would come up short after getting caught in the cross arm breaker, but he fought his way out and then connected with the zigzag for the three count. The crowd became unglued, and this easily goes down as one of the best tell changes to ever happen Facts. on Raw. Facts. Two years before this, though, the fans were experiencing a much different emotion. On April 3rd, 2011, Edge successfully defended the World Heavyweight Championship against, ironically, Alberto mm -hmm. Del Rio. Then, eight days later, he would say this. That I have to retire. This was, this is tough, bro. After almost 14 years in WWE, Edge's career was over. The announcement made the radar superstar choke up a bit, but he still talked about his career and how his dream was always to become a wrestler. Edge was in such good spirits during this that it made you wonder if it was part of a storyline, but he meant everything he said. Mm -hmm. Of course, this wasn't the end. Nearly nine years later, yep. the ultimate opportunist returned to oh, the ring, but this moment beautiful. was still shocking and heartbreaking to watch. 
Number 16 though, was the complete opposite. The final Raw before WrestleMania 15 mm -hmm. kicked off with the corporation in the ring, but they were soon interrupted by the sound of breaking glass. <laughs> Austin drove to the ring with yes, a truck love and this moment. The mic and started tearing into the Rock. <laughs> bro, the this is how you hype up a WrestleMania match, bro, right here. Like, when, when I'm watching this as a kid, I'm like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see this. He brought out a beer truck. I wanted beer. I was a kid. I'm like, hey, man, I, let me try some of that beer. <laughs> Steve, man, this was great. The great one could fight Oh, my God. He's washed out by Austin showering him with beer. Vince and Shane McMahon also got drenched. This is great. around in the ring. Vince swimming the in the ring. was pure fun in a classic WWE moment. Another iconic moment in Raw's history involved another wrestling company. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Well, WCW sure wasn't. In the middle of the Monday Night Wars, Triple H and D-Generation X decided to take the battle right to WCW yep. and invaded Monday Night Nitro. The game trash-talked WWE's rival and even got some WCW fans to switch sides. But do you think WCW sucks? Of course! <laughs> At one point, the heads tried to drive into the arena, but they were shut out. Missing out on what could have been the most unreal moment in wrestling history. Nah, that was pretty Still, crazy. the segment was five minutes straight of WWE tearing apart their competition, and it was cool to see WWE fight their rivals so directly. Mm -hmm. The next OMG moment was anything but cool. Oh, in no. fact, it was hot. Poor Jim Ross. Poor Even JR. He's a commentator, JR has been made fun of and beaten up. Yep. But on one unfortunate episode of Raw, he was also set on fire. This Little is when JR Kane was, given was the really wrong. Task of having to interview Kane, who had recently been unmasked. The Devil's Fear Demon wanted others to experience his pain, and JR became his target. Kane punched the beloved announcer and knocked him to the floor. Then, the bigger machine poured gasoline on the WWE commentator and set him on fire. While it was a bit cheesy, this was still yeah. shocking, since you don't see something like this very often in WWE. You don't see moments like number 13 often either, but it's awesome when it does happen. On the June 7th, 1999 episode of Raw, oh, Big Show him. and The Undertaker battled for the WWE title. The two giants spent most of the match brawling on the outside, but once they got back inside the ring, things got interesting. Show caught Taker by the throat and lifted him into the air for the choke slam. However, instead of landing on the ring, oh, yeah, the dead man went straight the through ring. it. It was an unexpected moment that got a huge reaction from the crowd. Mm -hmm. The hellacious choke slam was one of Big Show's biggest moments and an all-time OMG moment for Raw. Mm -hmm. Be prepared to cry though, because this next moment is a real tearjerker. From November 2012 to June 2014, The Shield were three of the most popular wrestlers in WWE. Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns were one of the best factions legends. of all time. And almost every week, they were putting on exciting matches. At the 2014 Payback pay-per-view, The Shield defeated one of the greatest factions of all time, mm -hmm. Evolution. It seemed like their rivalry was going to continue, but the next night, Batista quit WWE, and Triple H had to resort to Plan B. Inside the ring, this was Rollins a, first laid of course, out legendary moment with a chair moment shot to the back. The look history. on Dean Ambrose's face said it all. Rollins then attacked him too and allowed Randy Orton to continue the assault on his former teammates. It seemed like the Shield still had months, if not years, left together, yep. which is why this moment was a real And that's why it was such a crazy thing because people thought they could still go. They still have something to, you know, they can still keep going as a team. But when they, bro, that swerve no one saw coming, it was so good. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. This was fantastic, bro. Ah, surprise. One of the best well, turns of all sad. time. This next moment was the complete opposite. Oh, yeah. Tony Schiavone infamously said on WCW Nitro, Mick Foley, who wrestled here one time as Cassius Jack, is going to win their world title. I'm going to put some butts in the and he and that And the thing is, they, they were trying to, you know, pretty much screwed them over like they were trying to spoil the finish they obviously knew who was gonna win so they're like all right well we'll just say it anyway spoil the finish people are not gonna check check it out if anything they're gonna stay right here and you know watch what we got going on but it backfired because when people heard that that's like, oh shit i gotta go check this out not thinking you doing that ultimately you know ultimately is gonna cause people to want to see that and that's exactly what happened they screwed themselves on that one was kind of right. After trying and failing to win the WWE Championship multiple times, Mankind, aka McFoley, got one final shot against the champion, The Rock, on the first Raw of 1989. 
It was a no DQ match, which saw a giant Jeez. brawl break out. Thanks to help from Stone Cold Steve Austin, Mankind was able to defeat The Rock and finally become champion. What made it so special was that Mick Foley didn't fit the mold of what a WWE World Champion yeah. usually looked like. But through hard work and determination, Foley accomplished the unthinkable and shocked the wrestling world and delivered one of the best Raw moments ever. Mm -hmm. Someone else who has constantly shocked the world for good and bad reasons is Jeff Hardy. You can't have a list of OMG moments and can't. not include the charismatic enigma. Yep. On Raw in 2008, Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy faced off in the main event of the show. The match was over pretty quickly, though, when Orton resorted to hitting a low blow and causing <laughs> a disqualification. <laughs> While this probably seemed like a huge letdown for fans, they're about to see something amazing. Jeff soon got back to his feet yep. and started fighting the This is such threat. a cool moment, too. The brawl too. resulted in Randy yep. flipping off the stage. This is such a floor. lit but moment, the ball bro. wasn't enough for Oh, Hardy. my God. Jeff's this is so dope. Set and climbed until he was 30 feet this above was the ground. insane, then bro. Then he did it. Oh, my God. This is the definition of an OMG moment Facts. and one of the most dangerous moves performed in Jeff's career. Facts. This next one, though, oh, is probably the spiciest <laughs> thing. Oh, yeah, the, the infamous sex scene <laughs> live on Monday Night Raw. I think it's still one of the highest segments in Monday Night Raw history. I'm not sure. Let me know. But I do believe it is the highest uh, viewed segment in Monday Night Raw history. WWE has ever broadcasted. At New Year's Revolution, Edge cashed in his Money in the Bank contract, beat John Cena, and walked out with the world title. The next night on Raw, Edge wanted to celebrate with his girlfriend Lita, and he wanted the whole world to see it. A bed was set up in the middle of the <laughs> ring. Edge and Lita began removing each other's clothes and started making out. Eventually, they got in the bed and, you know. Thankfully, Ric Flair and John Cena ended this moment, but it's amazing that WWE actually went through with that. Bro, and so the, the fact is that he F5'd Lita, bro, that, man, I said F5, F you the leader, bro, that's, it's a different time in wrestling, equal rights, equal fight. <laughs> kind of awkward, considering kids were watching on TV and live in the crowd. Edge and Lita's spicy times are a lot of things, and OMG is definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. Well, that moment got WWE in a bit of trouble, this next one nearly caused Raw to get mm -hmm. kicked off TV. In late 1996, former tag team partners Brian Pillman and Steve Austin were engaged in a personal war. The battle resulted in the rattlesnake injuring Pillman's ankle, God but that damn. wasn't even the worst part. While recovering, Brian Pillman was doing a live interview from his home. Brian revealed he had a gun, yeah. but that didn't stop Stone Cold from invading Pillman's house. Then, this happened. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, fans were left wondering what happened to Austin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, nothing did, but this moment received so much backlash that WWE had to publicly apologize for going overboard. Yeah. It might not be a beloved moment, but it certainly earns an OMG. This next moment does oh, as well. No. Bubba Ray Dudley was a bit of a deranged character. Yeah. During the Attitude Era, he took pleasure in powerbombing women through tables. <laughs> but one night on Raw... He, he was the epitome of equal rights, equal fights, bro. <laughs> he clearly took things too far. As Devon was wrestling Mark Henry in the ring, Bubba went backstage this to kidnap so Mae Young. Bro. She was brought to ringside, where the Dudley boys laid out Henry with a 3D. That was then, a sick Then things 3D. got a bit disturbing. This the was cold, bro. The 77-year-old was wheeled back up the entrance ramp, where Bubba picked her up and power bombed Mae Young oh right off the God, stage and through a so table. Oh my God, this is so savage. While Mae had been involved in physical storylines, putting her through a table was a whole other level. <laughs> that was so For savage, how old Mae bro. was when she performed this crazy stunt, it easily ranks near the top of raw OMG moments. Facts. But so does number six. In 1998, WWE was looking to make a big splash for WrestleMania 14. To hype up the event, they brought in one of the most controversial mm -hmm. and biggest sports stars at the time, Mike Iron Mike Tyson. Vince McMahon said there would be a special announcement regarding Tyson, but before he could say exactly what it was, Steve Austin interrupted. Stone Cold said he was sick of Tyson and declared himself the toughest SOB on the planet. Austin took things one this step further so by cool, giving Iron man. Mike double middle fingers. All hell then broke yep. loose. Tyson shoved Austin, and the two stars had to be separated by everyone else in the ring. McMahon was livid, the crowd exploded, <laughs> and WB created one of the best celebrity moments ever. Facts. Speaking of exploded, that's literally what happened in this next OMG <sighs> moment. Vince McMahon. This whole Vince McMahon exploding situation, bro. It, it, it just, when you look back at it, I'll just be like, they really did this on TV. This nigga really blew blew up bro i he just <laughs> opened the door sat in the car kaboom <laughs> and then they had a fucking uh <laughs> a fucking i believe they had like a funeral service for him it was wild bro and has made a lot of enemies over the years 
but in 2007, it appeared that someone on the roster wanted to kill him. It was Vince McMahon Appreciation Night on Raw, but wrestlers and celebrities weren't giving the owner the glowing praise he was expecting. One by one, they talked about what an awful person he was. At the end of the night, Vince had enough and left the arena. Once he got outside, McMahon paused and looked around suspiciously, as if he knew something bad would happen. This was so and it wild, did. Bro. As soon as Vince closed the limo door, the vehicle exploded. It was a shocking moment as it appeared the owner of WWE had just died. WWE has done a lot of crazy stuff. It's so as funny seen, to me, bro. But this one isn't a league of its own. This next bomb is more figurative, but of was course. just as destructive. It has to be on this By list. By the summer of 2011, the pipe many bomb, WWE man. fans had grown tired of John Cena always being in the spotlight. They want something and someone <clears> new, but WWE never gave it to them. Regardless, Cena was set to have a match with CM Punk. One night on Raw, CM Punk was given a live mic and said everything you aren't supposed to say in WWE. Facts. There's one thing you're better at than I am, and that's kissing Vince McMahon's ass. Punk basically broke character and blasted mm -hmm. WWE for how poorly the company was run. He insulted not only Vince McMahon, but also Stephanie and Triple H. In an even more surprising moment, Punk openly talked about winning the WWE title and defending it in Ring of Honor and New Japan. Mm -hmm. This was all stuff you would never even think someone would say on WWE programming. Despite Legendary that, moment. It instantly turned Punk into a megastar and is still discussed over a decade later. Facts. The pipe bomb promo was awesome. This next moment was truly horrifying. Yeah, this in one was pretty In 2012, we nearly saw Hall of Fame wrestler and announcer Jerry Lawler die on live TV. On the September 10th, 2012 edition of Raw, Lawler teamed up with Randy Orton to take on CM Punk and Dolph Ziggler. At one point during the match, Lawler took 10 elbow drops from Ziggler. While it was an excessive amount, it still looked like a typical wrestling move but it may have had near fatal consequences. Mm -hmm. After the match was over, the King went right back to the announcer's table to do commentary. Later, in the middle of another tag team match, Jerry Lawler suddenly passed out. WWE staff rushed over to the announcer's table and fans could only speculate as to what exactly was going on. Later on, Michael Cole explained what happened. Jerry, uh, Jerry collapsed and we understand now that, uh, that Jerry is receiving medical attention as we speak. Uh, they are performing CPR, um, and again, uh, this is not, it is not part of tonight's entertainment. Thankfully, Jerry Lawler was okay mm -hmm. and returned to commentary later that year, but his heart attack was a shocking scene and an unforgettable moment for anyone who watched. And next the fact that, you know, Michael Cole had to witness that, you know, I know that was tough for him, bro. Like, uh, imagine, you know, someone you work with for so long and you see them pass out, you're not sure what's going on. And then you're getting the updated information that, he, you know, he's suffering, you know, he suffered a heart attack. They're trying to resuscitate him. Like, that's, it's a lot to, to can like, kind of deal with and then still be able to call what's going on in the match. Like, that's, kudos to Michael Cole for even being able to do that. That's, that's, a, that, that was a scary situation and just tough for everyone, you know. Next moment was part of the show, but it's still an image that's hard to get out of your mind. On the Viewer's Choice episode of Raw in 2010, CM Punk and John Cena battled in the main event of the show, where they are interrupted by some unexpected visitors. NXT. Out of nowhere, the winner of Season 1 of NXT, well, Wade Barrett, started making his way to the ring, and soon, the seven other NXT contestants appeared from the this crowd. Was, this then, was tough, bro. Then, they suddenly attacked. The group showed no mercy, this and was great. to everyone and everything in their path. Michael Cole fled, Jerry Lawler was beaten up, and Daniel Bryan choked out re-announcer Justin Roberts yeah. with his own necktie. The group then set their sights on John Cena and ripped him apart. Yeah, this Even the was ring great, was bro. By this was a cool segment, This is bro. one of those rare moments in wrestling where it's all part of the script, yet it feels unscripted. Yeah, this that's was so cool. That's what makes this one of the most pure OMG moments ever. But there's one that's even bigger. Because people didn't, I didn't know what to make of that. I was like, what, what's happening here? What the, f what the, f I was so confused, but. I was intrigued because I was like, bro, they beat the crap out of everybody. Michael Cole was the smart one. He got the hell up out of there. For years, fans had been tuning into both Raw and Nitro and often saw top stars from one company jump to the other. 
but on March 26, 2001, it was all over. Raw opened with Vince McMahon announcing that he was now the owner of World Championship Wrestling. That announcement changed the wrestling mm-hmm. landscape forever. And keep in mind, social media didn't really exist, so a lot of fans didn't know about this until they tuned into Raw. Later in the evening, Vince McMahon came out to address the future of WCW. In the storyline, Shane McMahon mm-hmm. revealed he actually bought WCW right under his father's nose. Sure, while the Invasion storyline that followed yeah. wasn't all that great, this was still an incredible moment. It was a turning point for WWE and all of wrestling, and that's why it's the biggest OMG moment in Monday Night Raw history. You, you know what? The real re- that makes sense. That that that's. I mean, obviously, it, it changed the landscape of wrestling all together so it should be the number one moment because once again you're like what the hell he actually bought them what is going on here you know it, it definitely was a omg moment for sure but comment down below let me know what's your favorite monday night raw omg moment of all time if it wasn't on this list but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel i'm looking forward to doing the live stream reaction with the homie dub for raw 30 men or raw triple x should be a good time appreciate all love and support and i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace